Now, the Washington Post has an interesting article about Trump's obsession with cable TV, especially watching cable TV. Now, I've talked about this before, but I don't think I stre uh, really stress the utter ridiculousness of how much our president depends on watching cable news for things like policy positions and how little substance he actually stands for. Now, this article explains that during a small working lunch at the White House last month, the question of job security in President Trump's White House came up, and one of the attendees weathered, wondered whether Press Secretary Sean Spicer might be the first to go. Now, Donald Trump's answer, President Trump's answer, is kind of indicative of how he feels about the White House and pretty much everything in general. The president's response is swift and unequivocal. Quote, I'm not firing Sean Spicer. That guy gets great ratings. Everyone tunes in. So that right there kind of shows you where he's coming from, what kind of perspective he has inside the White House. Well, I'm not going to fire somebody who gets great ratings. People watch him. It's wonderful. Well, no, we're going to keep that guy. <laughs> Again, here's the funny thing, right? If it weren't so sad, it'd be funny. Uh, people tune in because Sean Spicer is a joke. See, they tune in to see what kind of ridiculous thing he's going to say next. But see, for Trump, he doesn't care. He doesn't care because, hey man, people are watching. That's all we care about. As if he's still running a reality show. Now, the, the, the article continues. For Trump, a reality TV star who parlayed his blustery yet knowing on-air persona into a winning political brand. Oh my God. Television is often the guiding force of his day. Both a weapon and a scalpel, megaphone and newsfeed, and the president's obsession with the tube as a governing tool, a metric for staff evaluation, and a two-way conduit with lawmakers and aides has upended the traditional rhythms of the White House, influencing many spheres, including policy, his burgeoning relationship with Congress, and whether he taps out a late night or early morning tweet. That's a pretty flowery way of putting that, hey, the president of the United States is a couch potato. The most powerful man in America, in the world, sorry, is a couch potato that gets his policy from Fox News. That's essentially what that is. That's a really, really nice way of saying that. And I feel like saying it, that the, the way that he said it kind of underplays the disaster this is. Like, again, non nonchalantly pointing out how our president is nothing more than a ratings-obsessed child. Again, making policy and decisions and tweets based on what he sees on television. It, that's a monumental disaster. And this ends up being what I like to think of as a perverse feedback loop. And we saw that with, for example, Syria. If you see something that he did being lauded by the media, if the media loves it, right? CNN or Fox News, MSNBC, he watches all of them. If he sees that the media is like, oh my God, brilliant. This is the day you became presidential. Well, then he's going to do it more because again, that, that helps him. That reinforces him. He's like, oh, I did something the media likes. I like it when the media says nice things about me. I'm going to do this more. Ah. Now the president, uh, the president advisor said, also uses details gleaned from cable news as a starting point on policy discussions or a request for more information and appears on TV himself when he wants to appeal directly to the public. Some White House officials who early on would appear on TV just to emphasize points to their boss, who was likely to be watching just steps away in his residence, has started turning, tuning into Fox News, Fox and Friends because they know the president habitually clicks on it after waking near dawn. So they know that President Trump gets a lot of his talking points from Fox and Friends. And of course, they know now through doing that, that the best way to use Trump to get their policy across is to get those talking points inserted into Fox and Friends. I cannot stress how much, again, how much of a disaster this is. For one, you're getting policy from a morning show. For two, you, people are learning how to game that to their advantage disaster now it's not just the u.s officials who are using tv to get to trump as this is as you're about to find out foreign diplomats have urged our government's leaders to appear on television when they're stateside as a means of making their case to trump 
and U.S. lawmakers regard a TV appearance as nearly on par with an Oval Office meeting in terms of showcasing their standing or viewpoints for the president. So it's the same thing as an Oval Office visit, being on Fox and Friends, being on CNN. D that disaster. Disaster. Come on. Now, let me explain um, or give you an example of this. Explaining his decision to launch 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles at a Syrian airbase, Trump cited publicly and privately the gruesome images of dead and dying Syrian children poisoned with the nerve agent sarin, images that dominated television for several days. So that's an example. He made a policy decision based on seeing things on television. Oh, okay. Now, maybe... Maybe someone, I don't know, should, should have shown the picture of the Syrian refugee, uh, that child that was that washed up on shore a couple of years ago. Remember the drowned boy that was uh, three-year-old Aylin Kurdi? He was from Syria. He was a refugee. And he was part of a group of 23 refugees trying to flee to the Greek island of Kos. Aylin Kurdi's five-year-old brother, Galip, also drowned, as did the boy's mother, Rahan. Only their father, Abdullah, survived. In all, five children died on that specific journey. Now, the reason that I bring that up is that if Donald Trump had been president at that point, maybe, the, maybe if they had showed that on Fox, he might have a different position on Syrian refugees. Maybe if television has that much of an effect on him. But again, they're not going to show that on Fox News. Why? Because that humanizes Syrian refugees. And again, Donald Trump is so susceptible to suggestion from the television that might get him to change his position. And of course, there are a lot of hardline right wingers that do not want that. So how dare we show that on Fox? Again, instead of noting how disastrous this is, the writers of this article tend to laud him a bit and use that, that flowery language. Quote, he is also a natural showman. During the campaign, he riveted viewers with his raucous rallies. Okay, that's wrong. Right there. Uh, he didn't rivet, well, at least rivet viewers on TV. No, no, no. CNN was incredibly guilty at showing an empty Donald Trump podium. While Bernie Sanders was getting huge, amazing crowds. They didn't want to show him. So, yeah, riveted. Riveted my ass. Okay. Quote, where he, often, where he often spoke for more than an hour without any notes or teleprompters. Yeah, he spoke incoherently, like a child. And in TV interviews, he sometimes offered tips on matters, including lighting and chair placement, with an intuitive sense of what makes for good TV. I get the point what they're trying to say. Hey, man, he's all interested in show business. That's what he's good at. So he's going to do what, you know, what makes sense in TV land. Because that's all he cares about. I get what they were going for, but again, the flower drink language drives me nuts. Quote, he is very attuned. This was this is uh, from, uh, from Newt Gingrich, actually, uh, who was talking about Trump. He's very attuned that, to the fact that cable networks have 24 hours a day that they need to fill. And if you are interesting, you are gold. Look, Newt Gingrich is nothing more than an ass kisser uh, who got nothing for kissing that copious amounts of ass during the campaign. <laughs> he got dick. But on that, he's absolutely right. These news stations, these cable news companies, 24 hours. Got to fill it with something. Let's fill it with empty podiums of Trump. Let's fill it with pointless nonsense. And sadly, that seems to make the money. That Again, that is one reason that the corporate media really loves this guy. Now, what's interesting also about this is the fact that, again, Trump is actually, he embodies, he doesn't just embody your average Fox News viewer. He is your average Fox News viewer, just made president. Trump's uh, quotidian viewing, uh, viewing is unremarkable. Based on his profile, Fox News' average primetime viewer last year, for instance, was 68 years old and mostly white, and the average American watches more than four hours per day, according to Nielsen data. Well, you have Trump, who's 70 years old, white, and watches six hours of TV a day. 
So he's pretty average. So what does that? What does he watch? I'm sure a lot of people are interested in that. I mean, what is he watching instead of you know being an actual president of the United States? Well, on his campaign plane, Trump watched television on full volume, usually Fox News, sometimes CNN, almost constantly. Said someone who flew with him, shushing his aides whenever he himself came on the screen and listening with rapt attention. When Hillary Clinton appeared, he'd suddenly quiet his team, often before pointing a finger at the TV and scolding, She's lying! She's lying! <laughs> now to relax, however, he would occasionally watch the Golf Channel while on his plane or in the clubhouses of some of his private golf courses. Now that he's in a White House, Fried's friends and aide describe a president who still consumes a steady diet of cable news. During an intimate lunch recently with a key outside alley in a small West Wing dining room, for instance, Trump repeatedly paused the conversation to make the group watch a particularly combative Spicer briefing. Trump turns on the television almost as soon as he wakes up, then checks in periodically throughout the day in the small dining room of the Oval Office, or off the Oval Office, and continues late into the evening when he's back in his private residence. Once he goes upstairs, there's no managing him, said one advisor. Sometimes at, what, at night, and this is amusing, he hate watches cable shows critical of him while chatting on the phone with friends, said someone familiar with the president's routine, a quirk a senior official jokingly called multi-teching. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Being such a vain narcissist that you will hate watch a cable news program and while talking to your friends, oh my god! Bob, I cannot believe what they just said on me, uh, about me on Morning Joe. Oh my God. Imagine if they watched my show. <laughs> Imagine if they watched the Young Turks main show. <laughs> or Secular Talk. Oh, or the Jimmy Dore show. His head would explode. <laughs> oh my God, Bob. Did you hear what Jimmy said about me? Dear God. <laughs> Hilarious. But also very sad. Sad, baby. Now, <laughs> in the morning, the president typically flips, flips between Fox and Friends, Maria Bartiromo show on Fox Business, and CNBC's Squawk Box. What about Morning Joe? They address that. Uh, West Wing aides assert that the president stopped watching MSNBC's Morning Joe after the show's hosts grew increasingly critical of his presidency. But some confidants think he still tunes in, especially for the top of the program. That also could, co could, could constitute some of his hate watching, to be honest. Most of the televisions in the West Wing display four channels at a time, at all times, CNN, Fox, Fox Business, and MSNBC. <laughs> President also likes One America News. Uh, and also, interestingly enough, the campaign... Uh, had told an aide that he occasionally enjoyed watching Al Jazeera. Trump watching Al Jazeera. Hilarious. <laughs> but look, he doesn't watch any of these channels for the facts. He watches, number one, for positive reinforcement of his views. Confirmation bias, if you will. He is not immune to this. But he also watches, according to people familiar, because of the appearances. Right. And we know that based on a lot of his statements and statements from, of course, uh, people in his campaign, because, look, that's what he cares about. He cares about appearance above all things. In fact, Trump took particular issue with the aesthetics of a male commentator who appeared sometimes as a guest on Morning Joe and began pestering the hosts, imploring them to dump the analyst who so offended his visual sensibilities said someone with knowledge of the episodes. <laughs> I don't like the way that guy looks. Fire him immediately. G get him out of here. Get him out of here. I don't like I don't like this guy's mustache. I think there was that was an actual story too. I don't like this guy's mustache, so I'm not going to hire him. Oh, what a child. Now you also have um a quote here from Rick Wilson. Now, Wilson is a veteran Republican consultant and a vocal Trump critic. Now, uh, he's going to address some of the problems with this. Now, he said a number of Republicans in Congress and in establishment party circles find the president's habits bizarre to the point of alarming. Well, 
I could have told you that. We found that we found him bizarre and alarming the first day he ran. Just saying. Now, the president, Wilson, uh, I'm sorry, uh, his quote, there are many conversations where it ends, but of course, God knows he could watch Fox News tomorrow and change his whole position. Yeah, likely. Quote, they don't get him because he's a creature of television and they're creatures of politics. They care about the details. He cares about what's on TV. And that is absolutely true. And finally, he adds, the president is a TV character to them and they have to navigate around it. Now, let me give you an example of that. During the last months of the Trump care debacle, Trump invited a small group of conservative activists, people who were politicians, to meet with him in the Oval Office. Now, when the meeting was over, said someone with the knowledge of the gathering, the president made a plea to the participants. He said, I know you have already said it's a bad deal, but Kellyanne is going to walk you out to the microphones, and I'd love it if you say it would great, if you say it's great. Wait, so you said it's bad policy. Like, all these people uh, go out into this meeting with Trump say, Trump care, this is terrible. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to buy this. This is awful now some of course were against it because it's not conservative enough it's too liberal but others are like no this is a horrible plan because it kicks poor people in the balls while they're down we can't have that we're going to get crushed we're going to get killed on election day what's trump say look i know you don't like it but you got to go out there kellyanne's going to walk you out to the microphone and you better say it's great i'd really appreciate it Look, there's a reason for this. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't care about policy. He doesn't know policy. He doesn't even know his own policy. No, he doesn't care if it's a bad deal. Doesn't care if it's gonna, uh, you know, kill, get people destroyed on election day, and literally kill people who lose their health insurance. Doesn't care about any of that. What he cares about his is his appearance and winning. That's all he cares about. That's what Trump's about. This man is nothing more than a TV character put as the most powerful person in the world. All he cares about is ratings, winning, not policy, not helping the American people. This is electing Mama June. In fact, probably Mama June would have been a better president than Donald Trump. Sad. And if all this doesn't concern you, then I fear that there's nothing in the world that will. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.